an interesting week it was. And this is a good time of year. Lots of fun, a lot of tournaments happening. Of course, it was 3.14, right, March 14th, Pi. It was Pi Day earlier this week, and of course, St. Patrick's Day coming up. So a lot of interesting things happening. And what happened this week economically is we got a CPI and a PPI report. We're going to explain what that means because both were stronger than expected. That has a lot of implications of what the Federal Reserve is going to do. It certainly does, especially since this upcoming Wednesday, March 20th, the Federal Reserve is going to be releasing their policy statement at 1 o'clock Central Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. I also think, importantly, they're going to be releasing their updated wild guesses about what's going to happen with the economy. It's called their dot plot. And so far, they've been indicating, let's maybe start cutting in June, do three cuts. Maybe now it's only two after these inflation numbers, the CPI numbers. So consumer price index, that was hotter than expected. That's the second month in a row that it came in hotter than expected. The PPI, producer price index, so that is the price that producers are getting for these goods. And so sometimes that can be taken as an indicator of future consumer price inflation. That was hotter than expected, but it was only one or two months in a row. And I don't know, it seems like the market maybe is taking two data points and trying to connect a straight line between them and saying it's a trend. I was always taught, maybe you want to wait until you get three or four data points before you start drawing on those lines. And we're going to have to pay attention to that. Of course, the trend sometimes can be your friend, but maybe in this case, it may not be. And you also used another acronym, which may have flown by people, wild guesses. We call those WAGs, right? So <laughs> right. Uh, there's no question about what's happening, but it was hotter than expected. And why that will have implications is because we have thought that the Federal Reserve was going to cut rates. First of all, in March, they kicked that can down the road. And now they're talking about June, and they may kick that can down the road. At some point, they're going to hurt their foot. That's right. Yeah, either they're going to hurt their foot or it's already hurting homeowners as far as being locked in or people who are trying to sell their homes. It's also hurting people who have credit card debt. It's also hurting small businesses that maybe haven't been able to lock in these incredibly low rates that we had over the last few years. So even if the Fed doesn't hurt their foot, it certainly does feel like they're hurting the foot of a lot of small businesses that are out there. And the other thing that we saw in there was the core retail sales report. Why that's important, it gives another indication of the health of the consumer. Obviously, we've covered over and again that GDP measures the health of the consumer, and two-thirds of GDP, of course, comes from consumer spending. So we're going to have to watch that, and it was slower than expected, Mm -hmm. and the stocks in the consumer areas reacted to that. It did. So the retail sales number came in weaker than expected. It rose 0.6% month on month. But for some context, that's only up 1.5% from a year ago. Now, these are not inflation adjusted numbers. So if you adjust for the 3.8% inflation that we've had over the last year, the real volume of sales has actually fallen. And that's not necessarily that great of a sign as far as with the consumer health. Now, in terms of the different components, over the last 12 months, furniture store sales are down 10%. Building material store sales are also down like 10%. The only areas that are really strong and positive, online sales up about 6%. And then, of course, food and drinking places, that's up 6.3%. So you almost have this bifurcation is what we would call it, or this forking between what's been happening as far as with, say, the traditional sectors of the retail sales that most people think of versus these more, I don't want to call them untraditional, but kind of these other areas people maybe don't think about them too frequently, online sales, and then what you spend as far as that bars and restaurants. That's the part that's been really rising. Danny, we talked about bar and restaurant sales uh, going up, and you're a health nut. Is, that's not you pushing those numbers, is it? Restaurants, maybe. Bars, no. Yeah, no, right. But, yeah. but really, right now, what we want to do is pay attention to those numbers, and especially as we go into the rest of the year. Of course, we've covered the fact that this is a presidential election year. That is also a positive. The second thing that's going to happen is earnings season is going to pick up again in April, But between now and then, we may have a bumpy ride, Brian. Yes, it does seem like there's some seasonal weakness here. Now, what does seasonal mean? It's not necessarily tied to, you know, the actual season, summer, winter, et cetera. It's just these different calendar effects. And in in, uh, presidential election years, March, April, and May can oftentimes be choppier parts of the market. You know, we know who the candidates are. Oftentimes, there's a lot of vitriol. There's a lot of arguing. 
a lot of uncertainty about who might win and what sort of policies might emerge. And so this is actually the part of the year that tends to be a little bit choppier than other times. As we get towards the election, it gets a little bit clearer, perhaps, as to who might win, what sort of policies might come out. And then November and December just historically have been very positive for the markets in presidential election years. In the last uh, positive piece I want to throw out there is we saw a report by Goldman Sachs suggesting that there will be buybacks. Mm -hmm. We want to explain what that means, but they were suggesting that 13% buyback improvement in 2024 and 16% in 2025. How should the listeners take that information? Yeah, so stock buybacks are companies are able to buy back their own shares. Now, what that does is if you are still holding on to those shares, you are basically getting a bigger slice of the pie. As far as the earnings per share, typically everything else being held the same will increase if they just do a buyback. Now, there are some changes to the tax code where it's trying to change businesses from doing buybacks to doing more dividends. But still, buybacks. If companies have a lot of cash sitting around, which some of these very large companies, they're cash cows, and they have a lot of cash on the balance sheet, one of the ways they can put it to work, they can reinvest in the business, or they can distribute that to shareholders. That does tend to be supportive of equity prices going forward. And folks, all of this information, inflation reports, the Federal Reserve's action, presidential election year, buybacks, all of this is going to go into what's going to happen over the next several months. That's the reason why your portfolio should be aligned properly. Know what you own, why you own it, and how much you're paying for it.